All right, piss of the day, 136 leg day. So today I wanted to start, fucking where is this? Where is this uh, button? There it is. Can't hear myself, oh no, nah, I can't even hear, my, I just can't hear myself even worse now. Anyway, I'm warming up with some, uh, some reverse hypers. I just got this like DIY setup. So now I'm gonna give it a go. I haven't done them before, but apparently it's really good for like sacrum pain and lower back pain. Uh, and like I may vaguely remember seeing people do them before, but they never had a machine for it. But I thought maybe I'll just try and like do a DIY variation. So I'm just gonna see what it does, see if it can decompress my sacrum and spine a little bit because I get, a, I get very tight um, through my sacrum. So we'll see. Padding's not quite enough. Oh, fuck it, what the fuck? Man, I just had like the weirdest. Oh man, I got like some mad. It's not, it, I mean, it was like a shock. It wasn't painful necessarily, it was a little bit, but I don't know, there was uh, in the sacrum where I get tightness. So <laughs> that was fucking strange. I feel like an electric shock there. I'm gonna do a few more, see what happens. That feels fine. Oh, that it is. Oh, you know what it is, I think? I have this weird thing where I can't fully straighten my legs and keep my back neutral at the same time without, um, oh, hold on, I'll try to show you guys. So, like for example, uh, I can easily, you know, one leg touch my toes, no problem, mobility's fine. But, both legs straight, I can't, that's, that's it. That's as far as I go, because any further than that, I start getting like, I guess, nerve impingement through my sacrum, uh, through the sciatic nerve. I can't, there's just no, I don't know what it is. There's no mobility through there. So that impacts my deadlift. Um, I think, yeah, it's, 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 it's either something further up the chain, nerve impingement, bulging disc, or something wrong with my sacrum, more likely, in my opinion. But uh, also, if I externally rotate my legs, I can do a little bit better. But as soon as I enter, oh, there, yeah, it's like mad painful. So that's just like a jolting version of that here. But I'll just do a few reps and, with my legs bent, because if I straighten my legs, that was really jarring. Oh, oh dear, no, no, I can't do those. That's, uh, that doesn't feel right. For some, they swear by that, but for me, that's no good. Uh, if any chiropractors or physiotherapists are watching, what does that mean? I'm a personal trainer, it's out of my scope of practice. Like, I have a general idea, but uh, that's one of those things where I'm just perplexed. Well, that wasn't uh, successful. I was hoping that that might've been something that unlocked some more decompression in my spine, but far from it. I mean, maybe it was, maybe it was decompressing, but um, you know, in the wrong way, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't pretend to know that much about spinal injuries or conditions. I know the bare minimum to make sure that I don't like hurt a client or something, but when it comes to weird advanced shit, like I think there might be a counter-nutative uh, issue also with my sacrum. Um, you know, I have a hard time going into spinal flexion through like the last vertebra, more so in the, you know, um, sacrum and coccyx and all that area. Whereas, you know, through my spine, I have a bunch of mobility. It's just through here, uh, I have a hard time maintaining that. But yeah, there's definitely something iffy going on in the sacrum area. What exactly, I'm not sure, but anyway. <laughs> Maybe not so much of the west side barbell fucking hyperextensions for me. So last leg day, I got 180 for seven. 
So today I'm gonna go up to 185, see what I get, maybe four or five. Um, I've been in a calorie deficit for the last two weeks now. So the strength or progressive overload is suffering a little bit, but. Man, I need to put the gloves up. This hex bar has, it's a cheap bar, so it weighs more than average, which is actually probably a good thing, it's a sturdier, but the fucking knurling is like sandpaper. This shit, I had to sandpaper it down actually because it was cutting into my hands, making them bleed. Still pretty painful though. I feel like I'm misgrooving today. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're warming up, you get psychologically uh, dissuaded because you feel like that felt hard. It was a warm up, and that's like 40 kilos off, but don't always let that get to you. I'm not going to let that get to me. I'm just going to go up there and see what happens anyway. exactly how I want it to go. 185 for five. Not too shabby. All right, that went all right. So I didn't train yesterday because now that I'm cutting, I want to take off a day before leg day. It's a brutal day and if I feel like I need it, I'm going to take it. And yesterday I felt like I needed it. It was a big long day yesterday. I'm doing a lot of cardio, doing a lot of walking eating far less calories, and normally I could jump straight into leg day, but in order to really get the most out of it, I decided that I'd take a day off before leg day, and I might even take a day off after leg day, uh, depending on how I feel. Um, in my recent video, I was talking about how shoulders get indirectly overtrained, especially with volume and frequency work. Well, I trained chest as of two days ago, and normally I would then just do legs, and then I train shoulders two days later. And when I train chest, my front delt gets plenty of stimulus. So um, I decided, yeah, it's probably best for a few reasons. One, so I could have more uh, resources to work with on the leg day itself, but then also give my front delt more time to recover until I then train shoulders on Thursday. So. Numerous reasons. I might not always do this, but that's just how I felt. And today, so I'm feeling pretty good. It, albeit in a deficit, strength is up five kilos. So, sick. We'll see how the squats go. I'm confident they'll also progress. But although last week, the squat, the three sets of five on, I think 175 was feeling 145, rather <laughs> 100, yeah, 145, not 175, not yet. It was feeling like there wasn't many reps in reserve, so. This might be a stall out session now that I'm especially in a, in a deficit, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, today uh, I wanted to talk about crying. So 
Today, I, I don't, I very, very rarely cry. I mean, the last time I cried was when my dad died earlier this year, and it wasn't much of a cry, it was just a few shed tears. Before that, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I cried, so I seldom cry. But I think if you really are warranted to cry as a man, you should. I think there's a lot of red pill nonsense where it's like, men never cry. Don't ever cry in front of your woman because then she won't respect you. It's all like hyper-masculine uh, nonsense that just doesn't make sense. Like by all means, I'm very much into masculinity, but the idea you're just never gonna cry and you're gonna be some like sociopathic fucking freak, I don't buy that either. I think stoicism's great. Don't cry at nonsense. There's nothing worse than the guy who's crying over the smallest fucking things, but today something broke me, and I'll talk about that soon, uh, but I'll do some sets of squats first. Fuck, that's heavy, brother. Definitely felt pretty heavy. We'll see if I can get all three sets. So, yeah, today, funny, something, not funny, something happened. I got a call and there was a very old man at the end of the phone and he wasn't, he was lucid, but you know, old and very slow talking and stuttery and albeit sharp enough to hold a conversation, um, old and he had seen one of my flyers I deliver from my personal training business. And at first I was like, oh, what's going on here? Like, oh man, this guy's really old. I don't, don't know if that's gonna be, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to train this guy. Like he sounds close to being Jerry, uh, you know, senile. But anyway, talking to him and he says, you know, he wants his wife to be trained. I thought that was interesting. He was saying, you know, my wife's in a, a, um, a you know, aged care facility. And he said she used to work out a lot. She was a fitness fanatic. And I was really confused, really confused. Not sure what was going on. She said, he said, you know, they had a trainer that was at this facility for a while and he's still there, but she can't train with him anymore. And she's getting depressed about it and her condition is declining. And then he said, you know, she, he has, she has some sort of condition where her physicality is going away and she can't you know, move like she used to, especially because she used to be a fit chick or a fit woman um, and her mobility is going away and all these things. And he, was, he sounded very desperate. And because he was so old, I didn't think he was, I think he wasn't entirely sure the, what a personal trainer necessarily is in, exactly. And at first I thought, you know, it might be sarcopenia, which almost every old individual or Everyone over the age of you know, 50, 60 starts to decline. The muscle mass declines, it's just how it goes. Your testosterone decreases, your myostatin increases, and you start to waste away, but albeit functionally so, you can still move around and generally be functional. You're just nowhere anywhere as strong as you used to be, and you can reverse it, or at least at the, main, at the best, maintain it. But it was starting to, and he kept saying, no, it's not sarcopenia, but really big pauses in between what he's saying. It sounded desperate. And he couldn't tell me, couldn't remember what it was that she had because obviously his memory wasn't that good. Um, and you know, by the end of it, it was pretty obvious that she had some sort of like degenerative condition that was irreversible. And 
he was hoping that me as a personal trainer could help with such a condition. I, I'm assuming it was you know MS or something along the lines of central nervous system decline. And he just sounded so depressed and uh, desperate and confused. And also, you know, he was, he's 83. He lives on his own because she has to live in an aged care facility, but he wasn't old enough to, or uh, decrepit enough, I suppose, to be able to live with her. So they're living separate. This man just sounded broken and something about the whole situation, many of, thing, many of the emotions that came up, I couldn't explain why they're so heart-wrenching to me, but a lot of it is, you know, just getting older and, and especially as a man, seeing your wife decline, something about that was so devastating to hear. A wife to a man is like a child. Uh, a, man, a husband to a woman is more like a father. I've lost a father, it's tough, but it would not be remotely as difficult as losing a child. So oftentimes men are the one that decline and die first, women uh, later on. And women seem to be able to handle that a bit better. Um, it doesn't mean that women are cold, it just means that it's easier for them to lose a man than it is for a man to lose a woman, especially in this condition where this woman's losing her physicality. After being a woman that was passionate about fitness, and he was hoping maybe I could bring some solace to her as a PT, get her doing something she used to enjoy doing, but she just wouldn't be able to do it. There's no way if, if, if it is something as degenerative as MS. Now, for all I know, he was confused that it might have been sarcopenia and I might have her as a client, and by the sounds of it, she's still mentally cl clear and can do all these things, so my hopes and prayers is that you know she, this is nowhere as dramatic as I think it is, but it was just heart-wrenching, and it was the first time I cried in a long time genuinely cried, like broke down. And kind of wanted to tie this into an idea that, you know, there's this kind of weird rhetoric nowadays where men are not allowed to cry by all, any circumstance. Um, and I get it to an extent. Don't be a pussy that's crying all the time. It's pathetic and it's feminine. And you need to, you need to, um, as a man, you need to honorably suffer in silence. It's just part of your job as a man, but sometimes you're just, it's okay to break. Like if something's so fucking brutal and horrible, it's okay to break, I genuinely believe that. Um, and then the idea of, you know, <laughs> never crying in front of your, your woman, I've heard this one a lot. And yeah, if your woman doesn't respect you and you're crying all the time, then by all means. But if, you, if your woman respects you and sees you as a true man and you just happen to cry one day in front of her, she's not gonna fucking leave you or cheat on you because you had one, bro one moment of breaking this. You have to, if you sit as a person, you can't break, then you have no emotions. There's no emotions to a break. And that's not healthy. You, you should have vast levels of stoicism that stops you from breaking from just about everything. But every now and then, if something breaks you, it's, it's no, it's no um, great shame or, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know, I just, I, I wanted to think, I was thinking about this because I, I just don't cry much. And the few times I do cry, I just personally feel like I'm warranted because it just happens every now and then. This is how it is in man, you will cry. If something is truly horrible enough, and in this case, it wasn't necessarily, for some other people, this would be comedic, which I find abhorrent, but for some people, they wouldn't even find this that brutal. For me, this broke, broke me. I was genuinely, you know, like, woo, woo, like fucking, but like tears and, and stopped. I couldn't move, like I wasn't, I couldn't go throughout my day for, two, three minutes. Sometimes, you know, I shed a tear, I'll think about a beautiful memory, or I'll think about my recent deceased father, or I'll get nostalgia about something in regards to him, or I'll think about the, the dark reality of, you know, my loved ones dying one day before I do, potentially. And that, you know, you shed a tear, but that's not crying, because that will happen, but I'll be still going about my business. I'll be driving around, I'll be working out, I'll be doing stuff. That's, that's, that's also perfectly fine if you shed a tear here and there. Uh, don't make it a big fucking boohoo thing where you start breaking down and bringing others down with you. And if you do break, don't make it that either, you know, but anyway, that was just kind of what happened today. I wanted to talk about it because I think it is sometimes warranted, but also I just wanted to talk about, you know, the <laughs> dark reality of aging. We all get old and sometimes it's a, it's a sad story at the end and you just have to accept that. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> that was not good. Oh, 
shit, man. That's uh. Damn, there's a little dent here in my bench. And normally I squat in front of it or behind it, but I went in it and it kind of took me backwards off balance. Nah, I almost fell fucking backwards of that. That would have broke my bench for sure. I think I'd be right because it would have fell behind me, but whoa, spooky. <laughs> that wasn't good, dude. I'm gonna rest a minute. I'll do one more set because uh, that just fucking, that was a bit of a shock to the system. <laughs> This, I think this is gonna be considered my first stall out because I'm not sure how many, I don't I think I have a third set after this. After, especially after that, that threw me off mentally. So probably gonna do two sets of five and then next week I'll go get three sets of five and then I'll progress it. So again, after I do my deadlifts and volume squats, I like to take five, 10 minutes to get myself recuperated so I can make the most out of this lever squat, which is, in my opinion, the most important movement that I do here for hypertrophy of the legs, or at least the quads. Uh, the deadlifts, more glutes, hamstrings, albeit hex bar hits quads a bit more. So just take a minute, and I'm just gonna take this time to just keep talking about the dog I was talking about. And um, yeah, part of, you know, part of it was the sorrow of, you, you know, I, I, personally, I, don't really, I haven't really thought about it too much. I've seen it happen, but I haven't thought it, gave it too much thought is old age can be a real shit. It can, you know, it can go like really badly. And I've always been on the impression that, you know, when I'm like 70, 80 years old, I'm gonna be the Jack Tan fucking TRT monster grandpa. But then it's like, you never know what happens. Like you look at this lady, and as the husband said, she used to be a big fitness lady. She used to work out four times a week, every day for like, you know, 60 years of her life or whatever. And now she just can't, no matter how hard she tries, because she has a degenerative disease. And there's no, way, there's no real way around it. So you never really know what's gonna happen. And age can be a really horrible thing. Really, br the main thing that was brutal for me is uh, one, Someone has to go before you do. Um, and that's that's a really dark thing to think about. It's almost darker than, it is darker than death itself. I can't, th I can't think of much, anything worse than, you know, being with a woman for 50, 60 years, loving her all this time and then die she dies or you have to watch her decline and die. Man, it, it would break you. This man was a broken man by the, by the sounds of it. And that's a fucking horrible situation. So, you know, I pray that that never happens to me personally. Hopefully I die before my future wife does or we die at the same fucking time or, you know, whatever, we go down in a blaze of glory together. Um, but that's very sad and very dark, dying, being alone with the, after the, you've had all this time. I've seen, you know, I've seen this uh, interview once. Um, it was just this like 95 year old man and someone was asking, you know, what was the greatest thing about your life? And he said, you know, my wife. And he said, she died five years ago and now I'm just, I'm just existing. I'm not living anymore. He's just, he's just waiting to die basically. And that's, that's probably what it's like. I mean, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're with some broad or some dude who just is an absolute piece of shit and you can't wait for them to fucking die, <laughs> then by all means. But that would also suck pretty bad. So yeah, I was just thinking about that aging. Uh, really treat treat your treat your temple as best you can because one day it's gonna fall apart more likely at least if you don't uh, you know you still get the outliers like that lady who was fit and it still fell apart 
and that's unfortunate. It truly is. But you know, you have a better chance of that not happening if you eat and eat correctly, work it out, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do all that bullshit. One day you won't regret it. Maybe that's the real way to go, is have like a really good marriage for like 30 years, but then you're like both 70 or 80 and you're just kind of sick of each other. So when one does die, it doesn't feel as bad. <laughs> like it's fucking morbid to say, but I've met people like that too, where there's like sort of an apathy there where they like, they kind of love each other. They, like, they still love each other, but at the same time, they fucking hate each other. And it's almost like if one died, they would probably humorously, uh, t you know, be okay with it in a way. Whereas, you know, the the couple that, or the man that messaged me today clearly uh, absolutely adored his wife and still loved her. Um, it's fucking making me emotional right now. So it's almost like that's the double, that is the double-edged sword of love is you have to, lo you lose loved ones. I just realized I don't think these pants I don't, I don't know if they're... Can I get a full range of motion in these? Oh yeah, all right, cool. I didn't want to fucking squat down and tear them like SpongeBob. These were a Christmas present from a client, actually. One of my clients bought me uh, a bunch of circuit, like fitness wear. It's very nice of her. Another client bought me a bottle of uh, expensive whiskey. If you're a good PT, your clients will reward you in more ways than just paying you. These people, have got, my clients um, oftentimes give me things, which is awesome. And it means, that means, I mean, the two that gave me Christmas gifts, these people have fundamentally changed their lives. One went from morbidly obese to a normal human being. The other one went from manically depressed and suicidal to a still negative kind of guy, but now he's happy. He's, you know, he's still got a negative demeanor, but He's functional and you know, he's lost weight and he's muscular. And uh, that is the payoff of being a PT. In the, in the start, PT can be a fucking tough job, but it pays off when you start changing people's lives. Never mind, I was gonna use that for a force rep, but probably not, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh shit, man. What have I done? What? of the video wasn't recorded the rest of the video got a hell of a lot lighter i went from talking about the dark shit to far more uh you know well less depressing things 
but you missed out on a few different exercises and a few different things i got a cool cramp when i was doing my fucking nordic curls which was probably very amusing for anyone that would have been watching but anyway fucking stupid phone fucking hate this thing i uh, maybe i'll buy like a proper camera sometime soon or something so i don't keep running out of charge or storage and then like not until fucking 30 minutes later i realize that i've not been recording half the fucking video anyway see you guys for more piss and vinegar bye bye